Hey everyone, welcome to section 4 as we begin probability and counting techniques. The first thing we have to cover before we get started is some vocab words. The first vocab word is outcome, which is the result of a single trial of a process. So if we were flipping this coin, the outcome would be either a head or a tail. Then probability is the measure of chance that a given event will occur. So the probability of this coin landing on heads would be 50%. Tree diagram, which we'll see on the next slide, is systematically way of listing the outcomes in a sample space. A sample space is a set of all possible outcomes of an experiment. And then finally, the fundamental counting principle, which the number of possible outcomes in a sample space can be found by multiplying the number of possible outcomes for each event. So here we go. Let's go ahead and get into what a tree diagram is. This would be a tree diagram right here. This also shows the sample space for flipping a coin and then rolling a dice. So here are my outcomes for flipping a coin. Here are my outcomes for rolling a dice. So how many outcomes do I have, or how many possible outcomes do I have for flipping a coin? I have two. How many outcomes do I possibly have for rolling a dice? I have six. Now the fundamental counting principle tells us that we find the total amount of outcomes by multiplying these two numbers together. Let's try an example here. So a bicycle manufacturer makes a 5 and a 10 speed bikes in 7 different colors and 4 different frame sizes. How many different bicycles does a manufacturer make? We have to figure out how many possible outcomes that we can have and we have to figure out what those outcomes are in. So if we take a look at our word problem, we have the different kind of speed bikes he can make, the different colors he can have, and then the four different frame sizes. So let's go ahead and get started with this. So again, how many gears can he have? What different types of gears can he have? He has two of those. How many colors does he have? He has seven of those. And how many frames does he make? He has four of those. Now the fundamental counting principle tells us that we have to multiply those. So when we multiply them, the total or how many different bicycles that the manufacturer can make is 56. Let's try another one. Now we have a 10 question multiple choice quiz that each that has answer choices labeled as XYZ. How many different ways can a student answer the 10 question quiz? Well, if I get us started by just drawing some blank spots for the test, how many choices do I have for answer number one? I only have three choices. How many choices do I have for answer number two? I have three. How many choices do I have for question number three? I have three. And we just keep going this all the way down the line, right? Well, if you want to, we could multiply all these together ten times, or is there a simpler way to do that? Yes, there is. How many choices do I have? I have three choices. How many times am I making that choice? I'm making that choice ten times, so I can also write it three to the tenth. And then if you type that into your calculator, you find out that it's 59,049 ways to answer a ten-question quiz. Next, we're going to have another vocab word, a permutation. A permutation is an arrangement of a group of distinct objects in certain order. So let's take a peek. How many different arrangements of ABC can we have? Well, if we arrange this, we have A, B, C. What other ways can we have? We have, if I can find my mouse again, we can have B, C, A. We can have A, C, B, we can have B, A, C, and then finally we can have C, A, B, 
and C B A. Now, if we want to, we could do that for every single problem with a permutation. But as you can see, these groups get large fast. So is there a different way that we can do it? Well, let's try it. How many letters from A, B, C could I pick for that first letter? I had three options to pick from, right? So I could put three there. Then if I use that letter, so I say I put a A for that first letter. How many letters did I have to pick from the second time? If I used an A, I would only have a B or a C to pick from. So how many choices did I have? I only had two choices for that second letter. And then how many for the third letter? I only had one. So now, with the permutation, again, we multiply those together. So we have six permutations. And how many different arrangements did we have? We had six. That also leads us into another vocab word, which is a factorial, which is the product of all counting numbers beginning with n and counting backwards to 1. Right? See this little exclamation mark? That is known as a factorial. A 0 factorial is 1, but we could also have 7 factorial, which would be 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Right? 7 factorial would be represented like that. So, how many different ways can five basketball starters sit on the bench? Well, how many basketball starters can sit here out of five? Well, I have five total to pick from, so five can sit right there. Now, let's say one person is sitting right here. All right, let's name him John. So John is sitting here. Can John now sit here? No, he can't. So now how many people do we have to pick from? We only have four. Let's name them Bob. So now we place John and Bob. How many people do we left, have left to pick from here? Only three, and then two, and then one to pick from at the very end. And what do we do? We multiply them together. Or we could have five factorial if you would have noticed, and final answer is 120. 5 factorial is also 120. Now let's change it up a little bit. How many different ways can 5 starters sit in a row of only 3 chairs? Well, how many people do we have to pick from to sit in this first spot? Again, we have 5. How about the second spot? Well, if again, if John sits here, how many people can sit here? 4. Same as above, and here, also three. Now, since we don't have other chairs, we can't put two and one in, so we multiply them together again to get 60, which leads us into the definition of a permutation. Now, a permutation can be written like this, or it can be written like this, but is the number of permutation of n objects taken at r at a time. So if we go back, we have five objects here, taken three at a time. So by definition, it's just like this. And we have n factorial divided by n minus r, and that is all a factorial. So let's pr try a problem using this method instead of multiplying things together. So a photographer has matted and framed 12 photographs and needs to select 10 for a gallery show. How many ways can the photographer arrange the photos for her show? Well, how many objects does she have? She has 12 photographs. So she has 12 objects, and I'm going to say that's n. So I'm going to go ahead and put it over my fraction bar. So I have 12 factorial over, and then 12 minus what? Well, she selects 10. She's choosing She's taking r at a time, so it's 12 minus 10. And that's also in a factorial. And then you can put this in your handy-dandy calculator. We come up with 12 factorial divided by 2 factorial, which comes up with actually a large number, 239,500,800. And 
And today in class, I will actually show you that there is a permutation button to use on your calculator so you don't have to plug this all in. And that also goes with the factorial button as well. Next, how many different ways can I put these letters into groups of three? Now we're talking groups of three, so I'm not going to show you all the groups, but I do want to get started here. We have groups now. Think of your groups. Is ABC different as far as a group of BAC? If we're talking groups, this is the same as this, right? They are arranged differently, yes, because A would be sitting in the first chair, B is sitting in the second chair, but now over here, B is sitting, oops, B is sitting in the first chair, not the second chair, the first chair. A is sitting in the second chair. Yes, they are arranged differently, but we are looking at groups. Are they in the same groups? Yes, they are. So this is a little bit different than a permutation. This would be a combination. And now the definition of a combination is shown here. You can write it a couple different ways. You can know that it's the permutation divided by r factorial and this is the most common way to see it right here which is n factorial divided by n minus r that factorial and also divided by r factorial so let's take a peek a restaurant offers a total of eight side dishes how many different ways can a customer choose three side dishes well how many objects do we have we have eight objects so we have 8 factorial, that is going to be divided by, just by following my definition, I have 8 minus, and now how many ways am I taking those objects? I am taking 3 at a time, so I'm subtracting 3, close that up and make it a factorial. I'm also dividing by what I'm taking, so I have to divide that 3. So if we simple it up again, it's 8 factorial divided by 5 factorial times 3 factorial. You plug this all into your calculator, or you use the combination button to find out that it is 56. Now, what is the big difference between permutations and combinations, it is order. Order matters, all right? For a permutation, order matters. Permutation, order matters. Combination, order does not matter. Once again, permutation, order matters. Combination, order does not matter. Combination, you're thinking groups. Um, you're thinking books that you read, meals that you eat, permutation. You're thinking standing in line, placements. Let's try one more example with permutations and combinations. Next, we're going to label these two to see if they're permutations or combinations. So let's go ahead and read it. 300 people buy tickets for a raffle. Then five different raffle tickets are drawn at random to claim prizes. Determine whether the situation is a permutation or a combination. Choosing five people to each receive one of the following prizes. A keychain, a ribbon, one cent, a wave, a jar of nothing. Does order matter? If myself, if I got first, would I be different than who got second? Yes, because I would get the awesome keychain. The person behind me would have got second, or a ribbon. Well, what if Bob finished ahead of me? Bob would have then got the keychain, and I would have got the ribbon. So does order matter? Yes, order matters. So, what would this be? This would be a permutation. Next, choosing five people to re each receive a keychain. Obviously, my English isn't very good right here. But if I'm choosing five people to receive a keychain, does the order matter? Does it matter if I select Sally then Bob? or Bob then Sally. No, it doesn't. If we go back to our last slide, order doesn't matter. So if order doesn't matter, this must be a combination. Hey guys, thanks for choo choos choosing, choosing to tune in. Have a good rest of your day.